Yo, what's going on guys? Jared here. Today I am joined with Max Ward, who just got top 64 at the YCS Philadelphia, playing the only Rika Sun Avalon deck, I believe, that got a uh, top cut, if I recall correctly. Um, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Max. I believe you were the only one playing the deck in top I cut. I was. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I personally do not know much about this deck, but I am all for getting educated on new strategies, so... Um, I want to ask you before we even get into the profile, what made you play the deck for this uh, event? I just love this deck a lot. It's really cool, but it's also just really bad. It like <laughs> shines when your opponent doesn't know what the cards do. So they don't know where to hand trap you, which is nice. So it's only optimal if your opponents don't know what the, they don't know what the cards do, like myself. Uh, correct. My top sixty four opponent didn't know what the deck did, and I got clapped. <laughs> Wait, didn't you tell me he got she shifted you like twice too? I did, but he also knew to hit the jasmine arrows every game, which oh, sucked. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, um, feel free to uh, <laughs> just show us the deck, I guess, and explain you know anything that's like you know whether it be spicy or you know the implications of the cards. So I play a two Ricka pedal. People play three. I don't think you need to play three just because like you want to start with Loki, not pedal. And, like, the third will only ever come up in a grind game against the Ikea Labyrinth. Outside of that, you just never need it. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe if it's getting crowed or, like, Nord back to the bottom, it hurts. Mm -hmm. But, like, most people don't know what your deck does, so they're not going to hit it. Uh, Triple Princess, you have to play three. People try playing two, just can't. It's an extender, and it's a negate. And, like, people cry this card every time you use it. It's like, oh, you didn't tell me it had a graveyard effect when I did. <laughs> Uh, one Primala. Uh, she just combos with the Princess because you can tutor both of them off Glamour, which is really nice. And she makes Strena. And Strena's just like your good card with Princess because you can detach and grab back like a Loki for follow up. But that's the Exceed, right? Correct? Uh, uh, yeah. The rank four? Yeah, the rank four. Gotcha. Uh, two Mudin. Uh, you could, there's an argument for three, but like the third will never come up unless you're like relying on Dance Panay. She just searches your Con Con, which. Just two is enough. Mm -hmm. uh, one snowdrop. You can just recycle it with Strena. There's no reason to ever play a second one. That's about it with her. Uh, three Con Con. It's one of the best cards in your deck. It sets your Rika spell and traps. So you can access Glamour or Sheet if you open the Glamour. And then it allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters for your costs for your Rickham cards, which is just nice. It also bypasses towers, which is nice. Since yeah, it's so. not an activated effect. It forces out Noirs just on its own. Yeah, uh, they didn't know that, and I get to go tribute, which was nice. <laughs> they didn't even <laughs> spin it back. <laughs> uh, three uh, Glamour. It's Rota for the deck, and if you tribute one with Con Con, it's nice. Uh, you can grab a uh, plant with the same level, which is nice. Uh, and then the one sheet. Uh, you can it's snatch steal. It negates uh, the activated effect, which is nice. Or well, it doesn't negate it. It just prevents them from using the activated effect, which is nice. Yeah. So, just really good. Uh, for the sun package, three Loki. You have to play three. This card's the best. Uh, one twin. I hate this card. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate this card. You draw it, and you're losing most of the time. That's about it. So it's like the Garnet hard brick of the deck, right? Uh, in this version, it's not a hard brick, because you can, like, if you die or one for one out Loki, you can just normal it. Okay. But, like, or you can, like, snow drop it out, and it'll still proc the effect if you have a Sun Avalon on the board. Okay. Which is nice. Uh, two sewing. Uh, searches through dry ass combos the whole deck. Uh, I want to play three, because hard opening this plus a four or lower is still full combo. And just, like, being able to search a second one for, like, the crackback or a follow-up turn, and just doing the combo all over again with OTK through Thrash was just really nice. Uh, triple Die just accesses the Loki engine without your normal summon. Bates hand traps, because, like, Gamma's, like, a big thing. Mm -hmm. So they, like, Gamma your dry ass, and you just go, like, normal Loki. And dry ass is it once per turn. How fun. Yeah, just do it again. It's, like, the one deck that actually punished Gamma's destruction effect. Uh, one, one for one. Uh, you can go, like, normal... Uh, pedal, search princess, then you get punished for droll, but you, then you can go like one for one, pitch the princess, summon Loki, and you have like nib protection, which is really nice. Oh, okay. Every time I did that though, I got drolled and I wanted to cry. 
<laughs> uh, triple drool. You have to play it, sadly. Or it's not that good, though. I never saw it. Uh, two Ash, I regret not playing three. The card's really good. I don't know why I only played two. I'm just bad. Uh, two Ogre. This card is only good against Samurai. Period. It's really not good against anything else. Uh, two Imperm. It's just kind of there. Just kind of uh, there. It's just there. Uh, three Cross Out. This card sucks. Don't play this, please. Just like I, I was always getting hit by like Mourner, Gamma, Nib, uh, Valor. So it's just like this card just was always dead. It sounds like you hated your own deck for this tournament as you're going through it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You're like, this deck sucks. This card sucks. I shouldn't have played this. This was awful. So anyway, I got, I made top cut anyway. <laughs> uh, one call by a uh, Saki one of that I never drew. <clears throat> just. No. So you have like play. max max hand trapped like counter, I suppose. Which is uh, fine. yeah. Uh board breakers because this deck sucks at breaking boards. Uh triple Santa Claus, it outs Noir, it outs a Rise Heart, and it hits Appalooza specifically. Mm -hmm. Or if they have that set up, they didn't go for Appalooza and they go for spell canceller and you just hit the canceller. Mm -hmm. Uh Dark Roller for Samurai if they don't go for spell canceller, just punishes them. Yeah. Oh, you main deck Dark Ruler. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Uh, your deck can't break boards, which mm -hmm. sucks a lot. It's just a very mid deck. So you said you would add Ash Blossom, cut Cross out. Yeah, there's like a lot of stuff I want to cut from this deck. Like, And now that we're like moving out of Samurai format, you don't really have the main deck, like all the board breakers anymore. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, I was going to ask you at the end, like, after you would go through the entire deck of, like, I'll, I'll ask you after about what where you how things you think will change for the deck after the new ban list and stuff, but, 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 but yeah, keep going. <laughs> uh, one Hyper 10. This card barely ever comes up. Most of the time, if you're, like, tributing with Strena, you're just summoning out the Teardrop, just because, like, she's another Rika name, and she's an Interruption. This only comes up when you, like, open really good, or you're playing against Samurai. Uh, because it just really hits monster effects. You don't really care to hit spells, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, one teardrop. It's mandatory. Sure, rank eight if you do the Strena line, uh, or you can do Snowdrop, which is nice. Uh, two Strena. You only need two. She just recycles. You typically only going through one unless you're going for the follow up OTK, in which you do actually need these three. But the good thing about Strena, she can also summon from the graveyard or extra deck, so she can oh. get belled. Uh, I actually had that come up. Someone belled Strena. Wow, smart. Which for that, felt yeah. terrible. For whoever did that, smart, you know. They actually read uh, your cards? Once, <laughs> uh, no, he didn't read the card. I just told him. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, one Bangle Lancer. It's to your link four. It's a bounce. It's a dragon ruler, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Melis, it summons out the Bangle Lancer because it reborns a Loki. Uh, this also facilitates the Thrasher OTK, just because like, you can get Thrasher at a 32 with 2 to 3 attack, which is really nice. Oh, okay. Uh, two Jasmine. She facilitates your whole Sun Avalon combo. Uh, when you gain life, searches plant, and then tutors out your Rika engine. Yeah, I know Just turns Sun Avalon into Rika. Uh, Dance Panay. Uh, this is a very luck sack card for when you open terrible and it's your only play. Mm. Uh, and sometimes when you're under Droll, it can hit like either uh, Sheet or Con Con. And then you can strun it back to your hand, so you have access to everything, which is really oh, cool. cool. Uh, triple Dryas, it's the heart and soul of the deck. Tutors out the selling when you use Loki. And the EMZ, which uh, a lot of people were questioning me, like a lot of my opponents were questioning why I wasn't searching sewing when they see I, set, I play the second one when I turn it into, uh, when I go for the Jasmine. Mm -hmm. but like, no, it has to be summoned in the EMZ. Most people yeah. don't understand that. Uh, two healer. It's a part of the combo. Use both because you don't want to use the Thrasher because this is your follow up OTK. And like, if you have to use the Melis, you can strun it back the Melis on your turn mm -hmm. just to put it back in the extra deck to do the OTK. Okay. There's like nothing you can change about this extra deck, no matter the format. Yeah, it's just like, tighten like, it. Like, this is this is the yeah. standard extra deck, no matter what you're playing. Yeah, unless you change up something completely, like yeah. Uh, side deck, 
three Magnum, two Drew Swarm, one Bestial. Uh, I don't want to get puppeted, and I hate uh, Math Mag. Gotcha. Like that deck can rot in hell. Well, luckily Math Mag did uh, did die, so you lucked out on that end. <laughs> I two owed all but one of the Math Mag players I played against, and the last one I think wanted to physically kill me oh my because God. I open I opened four Bestials. I was actually going to comment that your Bishop lineup is very heavy, so you might, you're you very scared of something, so I guess that was it. Uh, Herald, three Herald of the Abyss. This card underperformed. Just really not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just there for... You know. It's there for Nor. You can also call Wind Fairy to out Appaloosa. Just like your main thing is you have... Against Samurai, you just have to out Appaloosa. Like, yeah. you don't mind Baron. It's literally just the Appaloosa 3-4 negate, which hurts. Yeah, just too much. Uh, three cosmic. You have to play this anti spell uh, skill drain. You die to. Mm-hmm. This also just cha- uh, prevents the lady from training to mm-hmm. normal traps, and she has the chain directly to it. Yeah. Uh, and then triple even the match. I mean, I played against no cat. I, I no. I only ever cited in one for cross out. Just one for cross. That's it. That's all you ever did. Yeah. Yeah, every time I go second, I was playing against a deck that just didn't care about it. Mm, interesting. Okay. So it just suck. So, was, is there anything you would want to change in the... I know you, see, you already said the main deck ones. In the side deck, would you change, like... I mean, uh, probably like a bunch of stuff, I would assume, the way you were talking yeah, about Yeah, I need to play, like, going first cards. Like, that's mm. the biggest thing that hurt. Like, my only actual going first card was, like, Cosmic against Samurai. Because, like, you just hit with Kaoshi, and it just felt really cool. Yeah. But, like, outside of that, you have no going first cards. And, like, you have so much stuff you have to take out going first in your main board. Like, you don't want to have these in your main board. So, okay, so it's, like, ratio type, type stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. I didn't really think about that when I threw the list together. It was, like, a last-second list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it worked and, out, though, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just, so, like... No, you go, you go. Oh no! It, you just have to play like anti spell summon limits. Also, a really cool card for this deck because like you don't really care. It's like you're doing all your like big push on your turn, your first turn, mm-hmm. and most of the time you can just kill them with what's on board already. Yeah, no, that's fair. I know some of it was seeing more popularity for this event just for that reason that you can already make a board and then just set it anyway because it's like generically hits every deck mostly. I also just want to side times. one shifter for cross out if I keep playing that, just because like that's true. Yeah, this, this deck itself can play under shifter. It's just like when they throw other hand traps at you is when you fall. So this deck can, in theory, just play shifter itself. Interesting. I actually didn't know that. I thought shifter actually like super super hurt it. Oh no! You just do your whole combo still. You just lose all of your follow up. Oh. But so you have to like keep follow up and you have to keep a princess in hand. Gotcha. It just makes things awkward, but if you know how to like how to combo under, it's like fairly easy. Okay, interesting. Um, so now that with all that being said, um, moving forward for the deck, would you? How would you progress this forward with the new meta shift and how you would assume that the meta is going to progress? It, it mainly just depends on like what combo decks do, because that's where this deck kind of like struggles. This deck has really good rogue matchups, but like when you get like mass combo thrown at you like samurai you like have to play a bunch of board breakers mm-hmm. like outside of that like you can just like standard play kaiju cards just because like you could bounce them with bangle answer mm-hmm. and just have it on like the crackback right like you have to remember with like kaiju s cards is like once you do like the rikas you can't actually summon the kaijus because you get plant lock right so like you have to drop them like first off, which is why like against Math Mac, these really aren't good. By the time they're flipping super fractorial, you've plant locked yourself. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. And just like moving on, uh from how it looks right now, we're probably gonna move out of hand traps, which means you just don't have to play these. Yeah. If anything, you just like side them just in case you're going first. Like again, even then you just like want to side deck in like good floodgates. So you could play stuff like Owie, Polynosis, White Howling. It's Polynosis, like, what the hell? <laughs> it's just solemn judgment for players. Just play judgment. <laughs> uh, no, so the theory with uh, Polynosis is it tributes a plant. So when you have something like Strena on your board, it turns the Polynosis into a judgment that floats into a monster negate or a tribute. Oh, okay, I see. So it actually works with the, the strategy and, itself. 
I was trying that throughout the sprite tier format, which it, it did work out a lot. The only one I felt was underwhelming was uh, White Howling, understandably, was not very good. That's like the no spell like, card, right? Like it turns off all spells. Uh, yeah, so you banish a spell out of your opponent's graveyard, which is where its downfall comes in, and then you negate all spells they control, and then the following spells they activate. That's cool. Um, curiosity, how does this deck, moving into the next format from where, from where I'm personally sitting and my personal beliefs of where the format's going to go, how do you think this deck faces off against the Bistio monsters? I was trying to keep track of light and dark monsters in the list, but uh, I can't really tell. There's only two light monsters in this deck, in being Jasmine and Bangalancer. Jasmine's the only one you actually put in the graveyard throughout your combo, so it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, they Bistial, and you just put it back. You just bounce the Bistial, and then they lost their late dark target. Okay, that's good to know. Because I, in my personal head, I, I have a feeling for Nationals format, they're going to be waiting into a Bistial-heavy format. Uh, like, oh, yeah, probably, because like, a lot of people want to play Dragon Link for some reason. Uh, yeah, with the new uh, Assault Synchron coming out, um, that really propels that deck forward again. Um, so we're going to see a lot of, in my opinion, we're going to see a lot of Bistials back in the meta. But uh, yeah, I was just curious of how this deck plays through it. And maybe something I'll curious to warning myself if, if it does play around them that well. <laughs> you know how this deck plays. I've beaten you with it before. Kind of, kind of. And I, I don't know every <laughs> card. <laughs> but um, okay. Uh, once again, um, congratulations. I know this was your first Thanks, top, man. so big congratulations for you. My first YCS top. How fun. <laughs> and with my favorite deck, too. Hell yeah. That's always the best feeling, right? <laughs> But um, yeah, so thank you again. I appreciated all the theory and the uh, you know the conversation and everything. So congratulations, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.